part of it is you told us already to go. Go to the lost. All those around you. We don't have to go that far. It could be those in our own household. It could be those in our own school, our workplace, our neighborhoods. It could be a person right here today. But God, as we go in life, we want to be used by you. And by used by you, Lord, sometimes it takes us to be a good conversationalist, to be a good person who can be a, a good listener, a person, God, that is extending enough in our conversations so we get to the point where we can offer, Lord, what you're telling us and showing us. So, God, we need to be open to that. And so often in, in Scripture, we see, we see Jesus, Lord. We see your Son in conversation leading with one simple question that leads to the next, that leads to the next, and all of a sudden, we see a miracle. We see a changed life. God, would you, Lord, move in us so that we are going to be, we will be involved in deep, loving conversations, that you, you would use us as your tools and instruments for the gospel. Use us, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm glad that you are here again. Just in way of review, some of you may not have been here last week, so what we've done is we've saved that material for you. We actually have it recorded overlaying the, the PowerPoints, but we also have that handout. So if you want to very quickly just raise your hands. If you were not here last week and you need that material, it's going to be very helpful to you. Let me tell you, if you don't have it, just raise your hands real quickly, and Jonas is going to come around and get you that material for you. Okay, we've got, we've got a bunch of people in the middle here and aside, everywhere. We're going to start today on the six conversations, and we're only covering three. We're only covering three today. Let me just tell you what they are so that, you know, you guys don't have to look through your teeth. It's not like a big mystery. Anymore. And, and why we're doing six conversations. I mean, six conversations, what we're saying is this. We're saying there are six basic parts of being human. So after you ask a general question, like, for example, how was your day? How was your weekend? As a matter of fact, our wonderful author, Heather Solomon says she's decided not to use that question anymore because as an English professor and somebody, the was and the static state of that verb is very weak. So it doesn't elicit any response. So instead of saying, how was your day? How was your weekend? You say thing is like, what surprised you about your day? What surprised you about your weekend? Is there anything new that you learned was there anything that excited you? You see, that's a different question. Because what is our normal answer when somebody asks you, how are you doing? That's right. How do you all know that? How do we all know that? We've all been taught so well. We say, fine. And then if you are semi-curious, you would say, and how are you doing? And what do they say? We had, there's a full conversation right there. We're done. And that's why we don't have deep conversations like that. So we've got to cut that. If we can do this in the church, we'd multiply our fellowship level a thousand times. Just if we if we increase an active verb in our question, right there. Okay. So these six areas that we're going to talk about being human that we apply to conversation. After we ask a general question like, "What surprised you about your weekend? What surprised you? What did you learn going through that conference? What happened when you went on that date? What happened when you did this?" We ask follow-up questions. But the, what do you say? So what you say is followed by your six areas of being human. So the first area that we're going to look at is being the social component. There's the social, the emotional, the physical, the cognitive, the volitional, and the spiritual. We're only looking at the first three today. The social, emotional, physical. Okay? So the social you can ask like this. What surprised you today about being in church? Who else was there? See the social. Did you have a good conversation around donuts during our coffee time? Did you hear anything that surprised you? Would you learn something new about somebody this week during our coffee time? Right? That's a social conversation. So in the social conversation, you're saying, who else was there, basically? And there's some, some tips that we have for you guys here. So questions for starting a social conversation. Again, this is after the initial, hey, what was surprising about your day? What is something new that you've been learning at work? What is something that's been challenging you lately? What is a project that you have in mind what, or that you're working on? How, you know, other, than, other than that initial question, you got these some follow-up questions. What new friends have you made recently? That's a great question. As a matter of fact, if you ask me that question right now, I could sit down and have an hour conversation. So I made some pretty new, new, uh, new friends. And hopefully they'll be good friends. Number two, how do you enjoy your friends showing support to you? 
See, that's such an interesting question. How do you enjoy friends supporting you? Here's what I discovered about Christmas and birthday gifts. Nine out of ten times, not all the time, nine out of ten times, people give what they want to receive. Did you, re- did you know that? You notice that? People don't necessarily give what they think the other person is. That's a very thoughtful person. If you guys do that, God bless you. You guys are a very good gift giver. But the average person out there gives what they like. Right? And uh, I, I've seen, I've seen no, uh, reactions from people. It's like, oh, wow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you really like it? You can have it back. You know. You got to say, okay. Okay. Number three, how are things going with your classmate, coworker, family members, pets? Okay. So, again, it's, it's the social aspect. Number four, do you have any upcoming plans with friends? Okay. So, I heard you're going to that concert. Great. Anybody going with you? Okay. okay. That's another question. Which person in your life right now is a role model to you? Who do you think you are a role model to? So you were talking about a relationship with other people. So these are just suggestions how, as we start a conversation, we can go beyond, hey, how you doing? Or, hey, haven't I met you before? Are you in my third period class? Now you got to follow up. Okay. So three tips for following up. These are really important. Use the word story because it's an invitation for people to talk deeper and give more detail. Okay? So what is that story behind that really weird trinket thing on your desk? Like I went over to my, my son-in-law's place, and I go, what's the story behind that? They got this real, I think it's a, I don't know what kind of thing. It's some kind of crazy metal. But it's a solid cube on a stand, and the thing weighs like 12 pounds. It's a tiny little thing. It's like the size of a Rubik's Cube, and it's like 12 pounds. What's the story behind that thing? How would you get that? And off they go, they tell me. When you say the word story, it's an invitation, again, for a person to tell you more, and more be in a deeper way, and more detail. Okay. Um, by the way, this is, this, we don't have time to go through this, but our brains are structured around this question. It's like a big-time sugar hit for our brain. We're, we're, we're actually wired this way to tell stories. This is why the genius of Jesus in the parable. We love storytelling. <clears throat> Number two, after your initial question, follow up with a question about other people. So that's, that's a summary of those issues. So you say, oh, that's interesting. Like, for example, I knew of a teacher during uh, uh, on our, in our lunch break. She would run around Lake Merced, and her goal was 45 minutes. Well, you guys know. Bruce knows. We were in high school. 45 minutes. And I would ask. Then the follow-up question is, oh, do you run this alone, or are there other teachers that do this? How many other teachers on our faculty can run around Lake Merced in 45 minutes? I don't know. <laughs> That's a question. Number three, when someone shares anything with you, try this. Wow, that was cool. Who else was there? Now, here, here i got to tell you, this is so important because I've been on both sides of this. When somebody shares some amazing, shocking, crazy, emotional news with you, you have to match it with emotion. Or the person thinks what? What do they think? If you say to them, you're not going to believe it. I've been praying about this for so long, and it actually happened. And your reaction is, oh, that's great. And you just move on. What happened? What, what happened? They, they, they lose it because they go, you don't care. I was so excited to tell you this. But, well, you didn't really care. So I'm going to find somebody else that's going to be excited for me. And you know who we usually talk to? The people are going to be excited about the things that we're excited about. And they, they're going to be sad about things we're sad about. Doesn't that sound like a biblical principle? I think that's somewhere in Romans. Okay? We got to be excited when people are excited. We got to be sad for them when they're sad. It sounds like a very basic thing, right? But here's what happens. We're so distracted in our own lives. Picture, picture a person in their work or in their schoolwork or even playing a video game. And you, you get this kind of crazy news and you go, uh, uh, I'm busy now. Can, can I get back in five minutes? And the person goes, wow. Okay, I'm going to find somebody. Okay, so this, this whole issue here of saying, wow, that's cool. Who else was there? Is an invitation of saying, yes, I, I'm with you at that level that you're, you're telling me. That's such a huge deal for you. Tell me more. So on the social level, who else was there? And as we go through the other levels, you can match it then with that. See, these 
These combinations of questions, mix and matches, are really important. So we're going to practice that right now. We're going to have these three questions on your assignment sheet. I believe it's on page three. We're going to go three. They're pretty much identical, all three of them. So pair up right now and take turns to begin a social conversation. So you can, you can start out by changing the question, how are you doing, to what surprised you today. Matter of fact, you can all start out. If you, if you, don't, have, you don't know what to say, start out with this question. Um, you know, what surprised you about this week? Or you know, I hope this, it won't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't want to say what surprised you about this morning's worship service. I hope it wasn't too surprising for you. But anyway, <laughs> so let's, say, let's just say this week. What surprised you about this week? Whether you're in school, work, whatever. Okay, and go from there, okay? <laughs> okay, and then you take, okay, try using one of the suggested starting questions. You can do that if you don't have a question. And continue with appropriate follow-up questions. Again, show concern, eye contact, lean forward. Okay, don't be distracted. Put away your cell phone. All that good stuff that's needed in a conversation. And see how deep you can get in this. And then take turns and then switch. Okay, okay go for it. <laughs> but for the second, uh, second part is on the emotional. So you just go through it as a checklist. Maybe I can ask about their social. Maybe I can ask about their emotional. So the emotional is important because... Feelings aren't everything, but they are a part of us. They don't determine truth, right? You can feel bad, but God's still on the throne. You could, you know, you could feel bad about how you did on test and got an A, right? Right? Uh, whatever it is. But emotions are here. But instead of saying just how are you doing, it's going to take a little, just a little bit of more effort on our part to put an active verb in there. So th those are just a few examples. But think about it. Instead of just how are you doing, it's like. What, what, is, what is surprising for you? What is challenging? What is enlightening for you? What really inspires you? Okay? Uh, so a different type of uh, verb in there really helps. Now, there are some sample questions there, very similar to the social, but now in the emotional area. For example, what things have you been truly grateful for recently? Isn't that just great, especially for a Christian context? We should all be grateful people. As a matter of fact, we should every day have dozens and dozens of things listed that we can say, these are things I'm grateful for, off the top of our, top of our head. Why? Because we're constantly being grateful. We're constantly. And we share that. When you share how grateful you are, you have an opportunity to tell others about how thankful you are to God. You hear what I said? Not tell God. You have an opportunity to tell other people about how thankful you are to God. See? For some reason, we just say, well, if I thank God, that made me know. But what would it be like if you had an opportunity to tell somebody else how thankful you are to God? That's different, okay? Now, number two, what's been stressing you out or bothering you lately? That could be a lot of things. But, given up, but usually a one-word answer is just a good start, right? If the person says work, and you go, well, that's nice. <laughs> well, that's not a great conversation. Well, a good conversational partner would say what? Tell me more about that. What is bothering you at work? Right? Is it the job? Is it the hours? What difficulties are you running into? Same with school. If you just said school, and you go, oh, that's nice. Well, the follow-up questions are going to be significant. Okay? Now, number three, what's been going well for you? See, it's not all negative. <laughs> okay. What's been going well for you? What are you celebrating? What are you celebrating? There could be people that say, you know what? If you, I'm glad you asked. I just did this. Or I just got this award. I just I recognized my work. Or it's been a great day because let people have an opportunity. What are you celebrating? Uh, I got a call over uh, last few days. Actually, it was on Friday. I got a call, and uh, it was um, a different type of celebration. The person uh, needs somebody to talk to because the brother passed away two years ago, exactly on that day. What do you say in that situation? It was an emotional conversation. Okay, I'm really sorry. I know how he died. I know how his brother passed away. Can we talk more? Tell me how you're feeling. About this. So off we go. So some people, they, they, they want to talk. They need to they need to talk about their emotions. Okay? Hey, number five, what's been the emotion you're feeling most these days? That's a great question. Are you happy or why not? Okay. Are you sad? Blah? What is it? Okay, what is it, the emotion? So continuing conversations, here's a little, little, little uh, help. What has this or any topic been like for you? It could be a, even, even a, like, a, like a great moment. You're lining up for a roller coaster ride. I'm scared. 
he was scared his last time. <laughs> okay. Uh, what would it take for you not to be scared? Okay. Okay. What's uh, what's been um, what does that feel like emotionally? Is it fear or sadness? Is it anger? This is one of the reasons why we had a question early on when we started the class to share about what it's like in your stage of life right now. For, and then to hear from the other person. Interesting. To hear from a younger person and go, oh, this is how you're experiencing your youth right now. Interesting. Okay. And uh, to hear from an older person, oh, wow. See, my picture of an older person is that it's all aches and pains. So you're telling me you're... you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right. But you're telling me no, right? I was like, so it's interesting. But everybody's gonna have that perspective. <laughs> okay. All right. Did this stir up any old emotions or give a new emotional experience? Uh, that's what the question I had for my friend on Friday. Two years now. Okay. Number four. What does this make? Uh, does this make you long for? Interesting. moment where it recalls something in the past. Sometimes people get connected with their emotions simply over a smell, right? a word, a song, and it brings up certain emotions. That's interesting. And if we miss it, we don't ask about it, that conversation is lost forever. But we can. Oh, that's interesting. That you feel and number five, um, does this bring up feelings of nostalgia? Yeah, nostalgia is an interesting thing. So again, these are this topic right here. Again, this is just one of the six, but we're going to talk more on the emotional level. Now, here's what I say: when you're when you're sharing emotions, um, how can I say? You, you, we cannot expect others to be experiencing the same emotion we're sharing. We just have to know. We're, so this is why you have to be more expressive to share, or else people can't understand what you're sharing. We cannot, even if we took a poll right now, we're not all. So we have to tell, and we can't expect people to be feeling the exact same thing we're feeling. This is why it's very interesting. You, everybody could be watching the same movie and have a different reaction. Right? But if we don't talk about it, we'll, we won't know. If we just assume everybody else either loved it or hated it or felt the same, then we would miss out on valuable stuff. Okay? So we're going to go and we're going to try for the second question. Again, start out with a, a sample question that's given here or one of your own that helps you go deeper in the emotional area. Okay, so if you want to start like, well, what was surprising about last week, and then go into the emotions of that last week, or take some of these sample questions. We're going to move on to the third area today, and that is the physical. This is my favorite, it has become now my favorite go-to starter topic. It is my starter topic. As we're getting older, we can spend hours talking about back pain, toe pain, oh, all kinds of stuff, uh, skin rashes, oh, all kinds of stuff, balding hair. We can talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, old people, we, you know, we, we just like to talk about our bodies. We love talking about our bodies. It's great. Yeah, you know, I walked up a set of stairs yesterday. Mm, that was amazing. See, we, 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 we just keep going. We just love talking about our bodies. And you know what? So does everybody else out there. So if you don't know what to talk about, ask a person like this. I just sleep last night. I just sleep last night. I got a friend right now. He sleeps an hour and a half every night. And you know what? I could talk to him. I don't even have to ask anymore. I'll go up to him, and when he starts talking, he'll report to me how many hours he slept last night. And if he can sleep more than an hour and a half, that was a good night. So I tell you, a physical is a big deal. It's a tool of ours, but it is so, it's, we, we, are, we, we, we love talking about our bodies. Did you get enough sleep? Are you tired? Are you overworking? How does your body, you feel run down, right? Are you, wow, you look so refreshed. Oh yeah, I just came back from a two-week vacation, you know? And we love talking about our bodies this way, right? So the physical is very, very important. I discovered, especially with just anybody, but non-Christians, you just get into a, a conversation about bodies. Especially right now, um, hey, you know, Dan loves working out. I love working out. Uh, man, when I get together with, with, with Sonny and Howie, we're talking about basketball. And, you know, Jonas was talking about the Warriors, but that's okay. We can talk about the Warriors. But we're talking about playing basketball. Come on. Yeah. We were just moving down the court like this, but we're still talking about basketball. 
So there's commonality, right? There's things that we like to talk about. So this, is, to me, has become an amazing area, um, especially I, I, I do confess I am a gym goer. So when everybody in there is concerned about their body, every single one of them. And guess what? Everybody outside, outside the gym is also concerned about their body, but more so. But we just talk about it in different ways. What are you guys doing right now? Well, I've been doing this. I've been doing this. Man, my muscles doubled since last year. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know? okay. So, all right. So, we're talking about the physical. But the physical is something that can lead very easily, what? To the spiritual or back to the emotional. Right? Very quickly, when I'm in the gym or traveling, something like that, it's not about how many sets this guy did, how much, how much weight. All of a sudden, it's like, and the guy says, man, but I feel so depressed lately. Okay? All of a sudden, what's he doing? He wants to talk about his emotions. Okay. And now the emotion, I said, well, okay, well, you know what? I know exactly how that's the best way to address that issue. And then I can, I can introduce the three circles. I can address the spiritual issue we'll talk about next week. But the physical becomes an incredible starting point if you don't know what to talk about. If you don't know what to talk about. The physical. It's like, cool, hey, uh, I'll, sometimes I just go, you know, I'll see somebody. I don't know them. I go, that's a cool patch. Like every Sunday I come here, almost every other Sunday, I'll see Charlie with that cool shirt. Charlie, that's a great shirt. Physical, right? Where'd you get that shirt? T-shirt print shop. See that? And we have, now we have a conversation. He said, man, how did you know to get to that printer? Did you order it yourself? Was it pre-made? What made you print those words on it? Right? And all of a sudden, we're talking about something with the physical, right? I remember one time I was walking across the street, and a guy screeched his brake, got out of his car, and says, where did you get that shirt? It was a Magic Johnson summer basketball camp shirt. He goes, where did you get that shirt? He said, you're not supposed to have that shirt. Anyway. <laughs> okay, the physical is so important. It's going to lead you in so many conversations. It's going to lead you back to the social and, and emotional it can lead you forward to some of the things that we haven't talked of, literal, cognitive, and spiritual. But it can deepen it because everybody has something to say, and, they, and everybody is an expert on their own body. Yep. Whatever it is. You know? oh, I, can't drink, I can't do that. It's too salty. Oh, I can't eat that. It's too sugary. Uh, whatever it is, right? They're going to tell you. So here's some starter questions to help you guys. How have you been taking care of yourself lately? Are you feeling any pain in your body? That's another one of my favorites, especially uh, when I'm talking to an older person, like my mom. So are you feeling well? She's 89 and a half. Right? And there's always something new. Oh, I found a numbness here. Oh, that's important. Right? All of a sudden, the things that say, how did you sleep last night? We've already talked about that one. What's the story, right? What's the story behind that shirt? Charlie's shirt, right? The jewelry, the hat you're wearing. Why did you choose that? What, 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 what is the story behind that? And sometimes it's a great story. I wish somebody would ask me about that, about my three, uh, three circles sticker on my laptop. Right? What's the story behind that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay. Okay. Uh, number five, what's your exercise routine these days? Do you know that even people in the gym change up their exercise routine? They change it up all the time. I'm tweaking it out. As a matter of fact, I'm adding, as a matter of fact, my thing right now, I'll, just, I'll give you guys an update right now. I've always been an aerobic basketball guy. I'll do treadmills hours. It doesn't matter. And I'll play basketball. But lately, as I'm aging, i got to add I got to add weight. As a matter of fact, that's a little tip for you. That's not just as we're talking physical stuff. If you guys are in the gym at all, I encourage you, the older you get, the more weight you got to add. I'm just got to tell you. Okay. Questions for continuing a physical conversation. What did that do to your body? Well, yeah, I added weight and I was out for a week. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? Okay. laughs> Did that impact your sleep at all? Oh, I slept after like a baby after that, right? Okay. Or boy, I was up all night. Did that refresh or exhaust you? That's interesting, right? You just came back from a vacation. Uh, you know, there are relaxing vacations and there are stressful vacations. So yeah, you came back from vacation. Was it relaxing or was it stressful? Okay. What's your plan to take care of your body next day? Next week next year what's your plan okay um, you get older you got to have a plan when you're young it doesn't seem like you have you don't have to have a plan because you can bounce back so much but the more the age you got to have a plan number five what's your next home improvement plan oh that, that, that's a dan's question right there. any garden plans that's andrea's question right there. okay 
okay? And this is just something. So here's some tips. No matter what someone shares with you, think about how it impacts their physical space or their physical body. How will that affect your space, your body? Then use that thought for a follow-up question. So here's some follow-up questions as possible. Actively observe what's happening around you. You can ask, did you notice that? Isn't that mysterious or curious? Or ask someone about what people are celebrating and what they are thankful for. Okay, all, all, all those things, right? My follow-up question. Okay, so here's the thing. When we're doing the, the physical, it, it can lead. If you guys, uh, here's the thing. Sometimes as Christians, just a, a little summary point for all these three for today. Sometimes we think we, we want to get back to the spiritual and the three circles right away. You gotta have to resist that temptation unless you know that you don't have a lot of time. This is the first person you may never see him again. Then you go, hey, you know what? That's great, but can I share with you from this what's most important in my experience? Then you can jump straight to it. But sometimes if you're just developing a relationship, you know you're going to have an ongoing relationship with this person. This is important. This is not the fluff stuff. This is the stuff. Right? And here's, here's what's going on in the mind of the person. If you cannot listen to my story and, my, and understand my aches and pains, <laughs> then how do you expect me to listen to your story later on, especially when you talk about something I have no idea what you're talking about? The three circles, right? Right? So fair is fair, right? You want to make sure it's not that, that in conversation you're going to deepen it for conversation's sake and for relationship's sake, meaning relationship in itself is worthwhile. Relationship in itself is worthwhile. Jesus didn't force everybody to believe in him. There were many people, they came for what they wanted, they heard, and they left, and Jesus didn't go running after them. Isn't that weird? Jesus didn't go running after them. You want to go? Oh. Right? That's it. You came, you, you got, hey, they sat down, 5,000 people, they all ate, they all went and left. He didn't chase after any of them. So we have to let people go, have space to go, and space to come back. No problem. But when they do, you be a good conversation. You be a better conversation. There's no such thing as a perfect conversation. We're just going to be better conversation. Okay, real quickly, we just have a few minutes to let you guys go practice the physical. So go ahead and move from a general function or one of the ones to it. Switch after about three minutes, and then Jonas is going to come and wrap up. Okay, have a good conversation.